Hi, I'm Ian Stewart, the Executive Director of the Edinburgh Interfaith Association. Come with me as I journey through the city of Edinburgh, meeting with different faith community members, as we find out what Edinburgh Interfaith means to them. Why for you is Edinburgh Interfaith important? So, um, Edinburgh Faith Association is, is important because it builds those links between people of different religious traditions. Uh, fortunately, Edinburgh is becoming a much more diverse and multicultural city. When I first arrived here nearly 30 years ago, having lived in London and then Leeds, one of the things that struck me about Edinburgh was <laughs> how monocultural it appeared, certainly to the immediate eye anyway, and one of the things I've kind of delighted in is, is how much more representative it is of the world religions um, than was perhaps the case even 30 years ago. Um, and in that context, um, the need for us to understand one another um, and actually build relationships of friendship above all, actually, seems to me to be the a really important thing. It means a fellowship and a love for people of different faiths and none across Edinburgh. And the Edinburgh Interfaith Association first came on my radar before it was even the Edinburgh Interfaith Association. It was in the early 80s when our late founder, uh, Professor Reverend um, Frank Whaling, was investigating the different faith organisations and groups in Edinburgh that he came along to a Baha'i meeting and sat there taking copious notes, smiling away. And I was only in my 20s at the time. I thought, wow, this guy really means something. Uh, and, you know, Frank was doing this not only to the Baha'is, but going along to every faith community. And it piqued my interest as a young person. And later on in 89, when the Interfaith Association formally uh, started up, I thought that every city had an interfaith organisation. And it's only relatively recently I realised that perhaps Edinburgh was quite unique in leading the way. So what it means to me is that Edinburgh um, wants to engage with people of all different faiths and backgrounds and considers everybody to be part of one wide human family. I think society grows when it's nurturing good relationships and good partnerships on the ground. And I think something that Edinburgh Interfaith Association has done superbly over many years is really develop strong grassroots relationships. That cooperation, that sharing of education and learnings across communities and then fundamentally once you've identified the commonalities and differences celebrating the fact that we have so many differences and commonalities and actually we're a colourful tapestry when it comes to the makeup of Edinburgh and Edinburgh Interfaith has really driven that on the ground and sometimes we see top-down policies being made how can we improve things socially economically actually I think it's a small interactions that we have on the ground with people that really cement that and Edinburgh Interfaith has been so key to driving that for our faith community and for other faith communities as, a, as an avenue for opening doors and creating new friendships. Interfaith has been important for me in all sorts of ways. It, on a personal level, I've, uh, for many years now, I've found my own um, spirituality deeply enriched and enhanced uh, through my engagement with the great faith traditions of the world, um, through, through their spiritual teachings, um, through their worship, uh, through, through writings of all different kinds. What's important is you make uh, friends from outside your own community. Um, it's important to understand about other religions, uh, to see the differences, um, to be able to work with them uh, when times get hard and they need support or you need support and to be able to enjoy things when times are good um, and to be able to educate to reduce misunderstandings 
uh, that we have in our communities and to bring communities closer together. I always remember, I think it was, could have been the Dalai Lama, I'm not sure who said this, but, but I think it was the Dalai Lama, and he said, wouldn't it be boring if there was only one flower in the garden, if there's only one type of flower? And yeah, it would be if that's all you had. So we were kind of equating that to the different faiths and how not just that they're different, but, but to celebrate the differences and enjoy the differences. You know, why not? It would be one faith would be very boring, no? <laughs> that we know we to and sort of, you know, have these conversations that we have. So, yeah, I think we respect each other and celebrate each other's diversity. Do you have any special memories from some of those early events or, or for some of the events through the years? Many, many memories. Um, going on many walks with uh, people from different backgrounds. And I have to say that just walking along the streets of Edinburgh, uh, I've had the most meaningful and spiritual conversations with people that perhaps I wouldn't have met under normal circumstances. Um, going to events organized for International Women's Day, going to young people's events at the university and beyond, um, going to uh, many uh, events that have been more theological in nature uh, have been interesting, but for me, the experiential side of actually meeting people from different backgrounds and different faiths that perhaps under normal circumstances I wouldn't have had the opportunity has been the most meaningful. Um, in recent uh, years, uh, what stands out for me the most is working with uh, different members of faith communities and actually going into primary schools and doing a sort of interfaith speed dating uh, where your toughest audience are the eight to 12 year olds and they will ask you some scary questions on the spot and expect an answer. And that has been such a joy and a challenge. Uh, I have sat in many uh, panels at universities, colleges, uh, senior schools and tried to answer the esoteric questions, but actually being in the different communities where the different uh, primary schools are with people from different backgrounds. Some of these children come from asylum seeker, refugee backgrounds. Some really have very impoverished backgrounds and some have more privileged backgrounds financially. But this has been the real joy um, having the opportunity to have my own faith examined from the eyes of a young person. One of the things I very much appreciated during my time in Edinburgh is the Peace Walk each year and uh, uh, visiting different places of worship, different community institutions, uh, varying from year to year uh, because of who's able uh, to be uh, involved. Um, but in terms of Christchurch's contribution, uh, we hosted one of the IFA meals uh, some years ago now uh, with uh, a conversation between our uh, associate priest at Christchurch, the Orthodox rabbi in Edinburgh, David Rose, and uh, the imam of Harriet Watt University, uh, Hassan Rabani. Uh, and it provided a very good opportunity for people to meet uh, invited people from our local community to eat together and converse together. Uh, and then opportunity to ask questions. I think we were all challenged by some of the things that we learned from the priest, the rabbi, uh, and the imam. Uh, and it was lovely at the end of the evening, people had genuinely engaged very constructively. And uh, the imam gave the rabbi a lift home. So, you know, that was a lovely practical example of constructive uh, relationships. The most amazing things that I wouldn't have expected is the variety of topics. When people think about interfaith, they think they kind of go down that, oh, it's too religious for me, but that's not been the case. Whilst faith has been an important kind of ground for it, but there's been, we've done food, we've done uh, mental health, we've done domestic abuse, so many topics and obviously there's been very many positives as well. We had a concert a couple of years back raising money, Alhamdulillah, that was really good. Uh, so it's been, it's not kind of run-in-the-mill stuff, people are afraid sometimes or they have these kind of 
uh, preconceived ideas about faith, but that's not what we're about. It's about in, uh, real interfaith work, bringing communities in, learning about each other, supporting each other, and really kind of sharing our knowledge. I think that's what I have particularly found very, very useful. One of the things that has perhaps stood out for me has been the, the school's roadshow, um, where, where people of different faiths go into a school uh, as a team, um, each person, each member of the team is given a table so that you can have your artefacts, your pictures on display on the table. Uh, and the children will come in a year group at a time and they'll go round to each faith, each table in turn. Um, and that for me has been a really positive experience. Uh, I don't naturally feel very confident about working in schools, but it's amazing how much confidence you get, I think, uh, by going in and working as a team. Um, you, you go in and you gain strength from one another. You're there as a multi-faith team and you also build up friendships together. And I think actually that that sense of friendship among the different members of the team communicates itself to the children. For me, that the sharing of meals is always kind of a highlight. I, do, I just think that that fundamental kind of human generosity that is involved. So, uh, yeah, meals at uh, the Gurdwara down in, in Leith, certainly uh, I have memories of a, a couple of times there was, there was, well, I can't even remember what the occasion was, um, but we were, we were in the, we were in the Gurdwara. And as these things sometimes do, the kind of religious bit of it went on quite a long time. <laughs> um, and there were quite a lot of speeches that went on. Um, uh, but, but of course, being the Gurdwara, it ended up with oh, us all going into the hall downstairs and sharing a meal together. And, and that, there's the generosity of that, of that ability to feed that number of people um, just always leaves me um, humbled. say to someone who's thinking to become a member or volunteer with Edinburgh Interfaith? I would absolutely encourage them to do so. I think, as I say, there's not just uh, a feeling of goodness that comes from having those interactions and meeting people on a daily basis you might not have otherwise met. But actually there's a great experience that comes from doing that type of work on the ground, things that might even be transferable to someone going forward into the various career paths that they might choose. So actually there's benefit to yourself, your spiritual nourishment, I would say, and also there's benefit to your professional life as well. So honestly, an all-rounder, a bit of both worlds. I think it broadens it out. It makes it much wider. You know, some people seem to think that if you join a movement like that, um, that your faith will be watered down in some way. Um, but not at all. Um, you see insights from other faiths that are similar to your own. You understand people better and often it makes your own faith um, better rather than watering it down. If you have a, a good grounding in your own faith, then learning about another faith just enriches your faith and doesn't actually hurt it. And, and people from other faiths are not uh, dangerous. And, uh, and actually it's wonderful to meet different people and learn about their lives and learn about what they're doing. And, and we, you know, we often see a, a, lot, of, a lot of traditional religious people uh, have the same emphasis on family and, and family life and, and the importance of, of, of that and, and the respect for the generations and, and all of that that you will find very familiar, I think. Um, and, and one of our issues uh, is not actually with different religions. One of our issues I find in, in having schools in the synagogue is the complete lack of understanding of any religion we have in Scottish society today. And that's also one of the jobs of, of interfaith. Because if you don't understand religion, you won't understand Scotland, and you won't understand Scotland's history, and that's, that's a shame. I would say go for it, uh, because it's a very good cause. Uh, IFA has a good tradition now of 30, 30 years of trying to promote uh, better interfaith relations in, uh, in our city. Um, it's possible for people to join as individuals, 
uh, it's also possible for congregations uh, to join as a sign of their support for the aims and uh, ambitions of IFA. Uh, £25 a year, I think, for an individual membership, uh, £100 a year for uh, a congregational membership. And uh, that obviously uh, is a, a useful contribution to uh, IFA's activities. Um, people have different commitments, people have different amounts of time that they can uh, allot to things like volunteering. But uh, it's a worthwhile activity and uh, it's also, I think, a beneficial activity, an opportunity to learn and uh, meet and uh, contribute to the life of our city. Don't spend time thinking about it, just do it. Come along to an IFA event. There are diverse people, there are diverse programmes. There will be something where you will find that you are comfortable with. Not everybody is comfortable coming to a um, more esoteric theological discussion, but most people are very comfortable coming along for something where there is hospitality and fellowship. And IFA certainly knows how to put on a good spread. We have people from different cultural backgrounds, and uh, you know different cuisines and you know you will not be disappointed. Hold my hand and come in uh, but the friendliest people on uh, you know that work in the interfaith because their heart's in the right place there's nothing in it for them they just want to work for the community for the betterment of the community so um, and if you've got a project if you there's something that you want to kind of come come along and share with us we can help you kind of bring that to fruition so come in and you know there's, there's plenty of people that you can speak to um, myself and, and Ian and, and there's many other board members, Alhamdulillah, very friendly people. So don't be scared, contact us. Go for it because it really is, I say, I, you, you, you enjoy it because as I said, you'll meet so many different people, right? You think you've got a lot to offer, but you've got nothing to offer when you hear someone else's story. Everyone's got something to offer and everyone put, offers it in a different way. Uh, and that's the whole beauty and enjoyment of interfaith. You hear someone else's story and they'll present it and they'll, they'll give you a different version of what, you th what you've got. It's the same, but it's just presented differently, but it's the same goal, the same ambition, the same, it's the same love for creation, same for same love for the, the, the human race. Guruji says like, you know, First of all, love yourself, but love the human creation love creation, the whole creation. Only then can you have communion with the Creator. This journey has shown me just how much Edinburgh Interfaith means to different faith communities. It has shown just how much people's lives and faiths in our capital city are enriched through our programmes. Become a member of the diverse Edinburgh Interfaith family we will welcome you with an open heart.